And we're back with 212 Studios. I'm y'all Fake Cotton, and I'm here with Officer Jones, Miss Pamela Price, and Carol Campbell. Can you tell us a little bit about what you guys do? I'm Officer Jones, been a Chicago police officer for 27 years. Uh, I am currently assigned to the school and uh, uh, SRO, which is a school resource officer. And basically, I just uh, provide services within the school, um, try to, uh, you know, implement different programs to help the, the kids in the school. Hi, my name is Pam Price. I'm the director of Parent University. And what we do at Parent University, and let me go back a little bit, the Michelle Clark Parent University, the Austin location. One of the things we do in Parent University, we try to keep the parents informed on what's going on in the community, keep them abreast of different things that's happening through CPS. Hi, my name is Carol Campbell. I am support staff here at Austin's Parent University. I'm a retired teacher and I'm also a former homeschooler. So this is something that I'm familiar with having the kids at home with you. So uh, one of the hot topics today is about the coronavirus and how it's affecting CPS and all the students and family members. So we're supposed to be out for two weeks from the 17th to the 30th. And do you have any tips and ideas that you can give to the parents for the next couple of weeks? Um, well, uh, you know, this is the first time me doing a, uh, uh, one of these pod things. And I gotta say, this is kind of cool. I'm kind of liking this that's going on, you know, uh, but as far as, uh, with this virus and as far as, uh, the kids being out of school, um, as, as, any tips or, or things that people can do, I think you know, it, it is very important because we really, even as a country, don't know too much about this thing. So I think that a lot of people should take it serious. Mm -hmm. I think that a lot of people should, you know, uh, prepare to uh, stay at home as much as possible until we can get more information on this virus. Um, I think that people should take advice from uh, the government, you know, the, the, the governor and, and, and clo when he closed down these different uh, restaurants and stuff. If you do not have to be out, I think that we should take the advice of the people that's telling us to stay in as much as possible. That's what I, I think would be the best thing at this particular time until we can get more information and, you know, things like wash your hands and, and, and be more sanitized. I think we should take all that advice as much as possible. That's, that's, that's what I believe. So, Ms. Price, I got a question for you. You being the director of the Parent University at Michelle Clark, what are some struggles you think parents might face and what can they do about them? I think uh, some of the struggles that our families will probably occur is finding activities and fun ways to keep our children involved while they're at home. And, you know, I, I was sitting here thinking about that, too. One of the things I was looking at, I know, I know we need to have a structure plan. Each parent, we all know our kids, and we know what we got to do to keep them preoccupied. So one of the things I was looking at, I was sitting here thinking, what will I do with my kids since I'm at home all this time? I was thinking about, hey, have a um, movie, movie time. We'll sit down and have movie time. We will sit down and uh, prepare little hors d'oeuvres like we're going to the movies. And we'll pick out our movies that we will watch for that day or for that particular hour. And then I was looking at, how would I keep them reading? Because I just don't think our kids read enough. Um, I would get uh, uh, their favorite books. I would include them. Hey, guys, come on. Pick out your favorite books. We're going to read about an hour or two. It could be a book, a magazine, but we're going to do some reading. And then, last but not least, structure a time that we're going to do our homework and our schoolwork that CPS has put before us 
at our different schools and work on our homework package so we'll be better prepared when we go back to school yeah so um miss campbell um so what is one thing that you think you might benefit not say benefit but not look at this two weeks so negatively but like look at it in a positive way and benefit from one thing i found that um, because we're so busy nowadays, and not just parents with children, they seem to have schedules of their own. And because everyone is so overly scheduled, I think we can take this time actually to spend time with one another. One of the best things that you can do, as I believe, as a parent or a guardian, is to be the example. And so my children are readers because I'm a reader. They saw me with a book, so they would pick up books. Even when they couldn't read, they'd have the book in their hand. Read to them, read with them. Ask them about what they've read. If they have alone reading time, then stop and talk to them about, hey, what was your story about? And well, if that happened, what do you think about that? Is that how you would handle the situation? Use it to spend some quality time with one another. Um, Ms. Price was talking about making hors d'oeuvres. Cooking with your kids is a great way of spending time with them. It can get messy, but it's worth it because they're learning so much. They're learning measuring. So they're learning math. They're learning reading. If they're reading the instructions or you're reading it to them, they're learning how to break down information that they're taking in. All of these are ways that you can spend quality time with each other and it not become strenuous like, oh, what are we going to do now? But it's, it's great. And then you can eat what you may left afterwards. So that's a <laughs> twofer. <laughs> yeah. Officer Jones, do you have any like more advice or whatever what, that we could do with the coronavirus? Well, like I say, with this coronavirus, a lot of people, you know, we all we don't know uh, too much information about it. Um, so, like, the best thing is to, you know, like like all the officials say, just stay inside or stay sanitized, wash your hands, stay clean, and give people distance. You know, implement, you know, uh, like a six-feet distance whenever you're out in the public. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just different things that different things that you see that the, the, the government and everybody is telling you until we can kind of get a grasp on this thing. Until we can kind of uh, straighten out the curve, until we can kind of, you know, find out more information, and then we can move forward as far as with this coronavirus. I would, you know, uh, the restaurants, different uh, places that you go, for, for a few days, we're going to have to uh, back away from those things and uh, see what we can, information we can find out about this uh, virus. That's pretty much what I got to say about it. Yeah, so when the kids come back to school or whenever we come back to school, how do y'all get them back in that mood of, oh, we're, it's time to learn and everything else again? Well, I, I think um, if we've set a plan like we should, I, I just think a lot, of that, a lot of those things, they won't miss a lot of them. We just got to make sure that we stay focused as parents to try to make this comfortable for our kids and make it fun and worthwhile. I think, I look at this as an opportunity. A lot of parents and families we work, we have busy schedules. This seemed like it just broke down time to tell us that we need to spend time with one another. And I think this is a great time where um, a lot of uh, parents, we don't get to have dinner with our kids. We don't get to have lunch or breakfast. So this will be some sharing time so that we'll get to know, relearn each other all over again. It's a caring time. Uh, did you say, um, as far as getting them back into school after yeah. the break, the two week break? Yeah. Uh, you know, probably I would say like, you know, with all the restrictions, you know, that are going on. And I think that they might be ready to get out and come back to school after being inside for two weeks or they might get a little cabin fever <laughs> and you know and you you could get them back 
you know, into school and get them back in the mindset. I think maybe here at Michelle Clark, you should get Mr. Anderson to throw a big, huge party with a DJ. <laughs> hey, yeah, come and back. They, they'll be uh, so ready to come back and do everything, and maybe we can just get them motivated in that kind of sense or something. I like that. I think that's a winner. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I okay. think you all are doing him brown. But <laughs> I'm going to look out for the principal. <laughs> One thing that I would like to encourage you all is I think that the more they read, and it doesn't have to be, you know, war and peace. You're not asking them to read thick manuals, but there are many apps, free apps like Rivet, R-I-V-E-T, that you can download, and it goes from very low levels where they're only getting a sentence or, you know, three or four in a book uh, to higher levels. Go to your, um, since they're also technological children are nowadays, you know, look for free apps, things that will keep their mind activated. And that way they're not so disconnected when it's time to go back to school. I think that's important that you, they, they understand we're still learning. Learning is always going on. And if you make that a lifestyle choice for them learning, then they won't feel so bad about having to come back and do it. <laughs> oh, I like that what Miss Carol said. You not only do they got it for the uh, our kids, they got it for us, yes. the parents. Mm -hmm. So we can uh, go on and online and look at different uh, apps for for ourselves to better us mm -hmm. as parents.